Hey everybody, this is Deb Brett here again. This video is going to be about um, talking about the low glycemic diet and the glycemic index to give you a better understanding of uh, what they are and why they're important when you are um, embarking on any kind of a weight loss plan. Now there's many ways to lose weight. This is, this is just one of them. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the end all be all, but there are a lot of benefits to a low glycemic diet, especially if you have um, uh, diabetes. It's, it's the, the diet that's used for diabetics in order to keep their blood sugars um, in check. So um, I do have some notes here. So if you see me looking down every now and then, it's because I'm checking my notes because I just want to present this, these facts um, to you and not miss anything so that you truly understand um, what, what I'm talking about here, okay? And I don't, I don't want to give you any misinformation. So basically, the, um, the premise of a low glycemic um, diet is that carbs are not the bad guys. There are good carbs and there are bad carbs. Veg fruits and vegetables are carbs, so there's nothing, nothing bad about those. So um, there are many carbs that we should include in our diet for our health. Um, the glycemic index is something that's used to measure the um, response, sugar response in the body of s certain carbohydrates. A glycemic in index does not include um, proteins and fats because they don't affect blood sugar, uh, whereas carbohydrates do. And, and foods are judged on a scale based on a 100 score that is given to glucose, which is pure sugar, um, and how, how it affects the insulin response in your body. So sugar is at a 100. So the closer a carbohydrate is to a glycemic index of 100, the worse it is for your health. The lower the glycemic index score, the more positive impact it has on your body. And the reason that's important is that, um, let, let's put it this way, insulin is, is excreted or secreted by the pancreas in the body. And that's in response to the blood sugar levels that, that are going on at any given time. Insulin is a primary, primary storage hormone, um, and what that means is that um, it, it controls how nutrients get in, into your body. When the blood sugar goes up, insulin is released to bring the um, bl blood sugar back down, storing it until there's a certain baseline is, is reached. And so you have a baseline of insulin or, bl or blood sugar or blood in your or sugar in your blood, that should stay very even. And, and our body responds to different foods by um, increasing blood sugar and decreasing blood sugar, and the insulin um, then responds to, to those foods that we put in our body. Kind of, Hopefully it'll make sense as I go along. And when the blood sugar levels decrease, your pancreas then stops sending out insulin. It's like a, a, um, a stimulus response system that your body uses to keep, to keep things um, on an even keel. So when there's a lot of insulin present in the bloodstream, your body is, con is in what's considered a storage mode, which means it's not burning fat. So while, you're, um, while your blood sugar is up, your body's actually using the sugar in your body and burns that for energy because it's the quickest, most convenient source of energy that we have. Um, so that's, that's a good lesson there. You know, a lot of people, when you see them at the gym, either on treadmills or whatever they're doing, uh, lifting weights, they're drinking these energy drinks, which is one of the worst things that you, you could do because the, the, the glycemic index of an energy drink, like Gatorade, for example, is very close to 100, which is almost like just drink, putting pure sugar into your body. And so while you're exercising, your body's burning that sugar instead of burning the fat. So it's kind of count, counter intuitive to uh, trying to reach weight loss goals. Um, when you eat a high GI food, your blood sugar rises very rapidly. And because then um, your body doesn't really know how much in insulin to send out, it sends out a whole bunch at one time. And then what happens when that, when that occurs is that there's too much insulin in the, in the blood sugar and the levels then dr drop below normal. And what happens then is that it creates cravings for, it, you feel like you're hungry all the time. So then you eat more, which sends your blood sugar back up again, and you have this up and down, up and down response, um, which is it's a, it's a very bad thing, especially when you're trying to lose weight. It's a vicious cycle. Um, so in order to put an end to that cycle um, is, is why we want to eat foods that are low on the glycemic index. Um, they're, they're converted into sugars very, very slowly so that 
there's not an overabundance of, sh of sugar in the blood, so the body actually uses um, or burns fat instead of sugar, and that's where uh, weight loss can um, be greatly enhanced by um, choosing to eat low glycemic foods. Uh, one of the th interesting thing about this whole thing is, like, for example, uh, if you have a if you eat a rice cake, that's fairly high on the glycemic index. But if you add something to the rice cake, like for instance peanut butter, because peanut butter is a is a protein fat and fat uh, combination, it will actually lower the, the GI level of the rice cake by combining the two together, by combining a higher GI food with a um, very low GI food, which basically there is, uh, it's not even on the, on the um, glycemic index, proteins and fats. By combining them together, you can lower the glycemic impact to your body, which is a very interesting thing. The bottom line is that the glycemic uh, diet a low glycemic diet works. It's scientifically based, it's not a fad, and it can be very effective in, in attaining your weight loss goals.